thought I would shoot a quick video and show you a project that I'm working on. Last year, oops, I just hit my camera. Sorry about the wiggle. Last year, I made these uh, candy corns. I made several of them. Uh, basically, you, you use the three strips of color and you make a long bar and then you slice that bar up and you've got candy corn. And so I used some of them to make uh, pendants and, and earrings. Uh, here's a photo of my wife who uh, is modeling the, uh, the fin finished goods. But because you're, so, so essentially because this is a long strip and then you're cutting triangles, you know, kind of in opposite directions, you end up with some that are backwards. So a true candy corn has yellow on the bottom uh, with a little white top like that. But I didn't use these because I wasn't really thrilled with kind of the way they turned out, the way they fused down. Uh, so these were my, my factory seconds, if you will. But that's what a true candy corn looks like. But when you're cutting them, see, you're cutting them on the, uh, the diagonal like this. And so you end up with a fair amount of them that actually are opposite, that have a white bottom and a yellow top. And I don't know that anybody really pays attention or, or geez, I hit the camera again, uh, or, or notices that, but I didn't want to use them. But I thought uh, they would look kind of cute all piled up as a platter. So, I mean, I use all of these, but I've got this uh, little piece of uh, black glass. There's a piece of clear tech to underneath here, and I'm gonna fuse uh, some of these candy corns on into a little bit of a pattern and um, turn this into a little little platter for the holidays. So um, stand by and I'll show you what this looks like when it comes out of the kiln. Okay, so kiln reveal. I've got all kinds of little projects going on in here, but um, here's the candy corn. So I'm disappointed with this. Uh, two things. I knew that I was running this on a full fuse schedule and I think um, even, I, I just, I should have run this on more of a, of a contour or even more of a tack fuse. So in the full fuse, see how they melted down and there was, I don't know, just some crud on the bottom, which then kind of curled up. And actually it's kind of textured as I run my finger across that. I don't like this at all. So um, these candy corn, just, they melted funny. I'm not, the colors are cool. And I love the colors against the black, but this is kind of crap. <laughs> So um, I may try to do something different with this uh, because this is almost three layers tall in some spots. There's a lot of, you can't see it here, but there's a lot of um, texture to this or, or, or depth to this. I was thinking about, in order to try to save the glass, flipping it over and refusing it, making this the bottom that you know people may not care about and trying again on the other side with a couple more candy corn and maybe doing it as, as more of a tack or contour view. So we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Okay, here's what I've decided to do on this piece. I am, I spray a little water on this and I'm taking a 400 grit diamond pad and I'm just where it was really rough in some areas. I'm just knocking that back a little bit with this diamond pad. So, I mean, I know this is gonna fully scuff this up and, you know, completely ruin the finish, and that's okay. I don't have a lot of cold working tools, so I just got my, my hands and what I got here, but already this is so much better. It was, it was really, there's a spot there, but it was really rough in some, some places, and so I just wanted to take care of that. And now, I'm gonna put this back in the kiln upside down and just fire it blank like this and get a nice, um, I'll do a full fuse and get a nice uh, surface here. And then I do have just a, a small handful of these candy corn left. So I'll put, you know, maybe three on there to be kind of cute and tack fuse it and um, see how that how that looks. Uh, I won't, I, I may do something between a tack and a contour fuse. Uh, so that'll be the bottom of the platter then, um, which I don't care about, but uh, I'll see if I can save this piece of glass anyway by flipping it over and refiring it. Okay, so this project has taken some interesting turns and uh, here's what we're doing now. So the full fuse turning it upside down worked well, but I got some uh, devit kind of all over it there. That's probably the best view. So <clears throat> this was gonna be the bottom. I'm still okay using that as the bottom. I flipped it over to get a clean uh, start on the top and then it came out with this uh, Devit on it Again, so you see that haze. That's just unfortunate. So I'm gonna show you now how I'm gonna attempt to fix that I've done this once or twice before not a lot. So we'll see if this works. So uh, here's my piece 
I've got to clean it up. I've just got fingerprints on it. So let me make sure I, I get those off. And then what you're going to do, um, there are a couple ways to, to fix this, and a lot of it actually depends on your um, kind of equipment that you have and what your patience is. Uh, a lot of people might sandblast this off and then um, actually decide to keep that sandblasted look or <clears throat> would refuse it in the kiln and fire polish it again. Some people use etch-all etching cream. I have some of that around here somewhere. Here we go. Or armor etch is what it's called. Um, you could paint this on there, let it sit for a while. It kind of etches that off. Again, you have to refire it then after that. I just think this stuff's kind of nasty, to be honest. It makes a mess. It stinks. It's full of chemicals. So I prefer not to use that if I don't have to. The other option is to dust some clear prep powder. This is crystal clear from Bullseye 1401 and dust a thin layer over this whole thing as is. I'm not going to do any other treatment to it other than washing it off and then taking that to a full fuse and it should come out hopefully with that shine. So I'm going to do that now. What I've done is I'll put on my, my mask. Always mask up when you're working with powders. Uh, but what I've done is I've set just a couple of little solo cups on here to give me some height so that once I've got this dusted powder on, I can come up underneath it and lift it up and very carefully walk it over to my kiln and put it down. So I'm going to dust this powder on in a very thin layer. There are ways to do this that are different. As, as everything in glass, there are lots of different ways to do it. Um, you can, some people will put a screen, like a screen print over the top of it and then um, brush the the uh, frit through the screen. Totally an acceptable way to do it. That's a lot of equipment. I don't feel like making that mess right now. Uh, I'm working fast and trying to just get this done. So I'm just gonna use a good old fashioned uh, sifter. Actually, I've got a bigger one. Let's see here. Sorry, yep, I'm gonna use this bigger one. So uh, uh, from up high, I'm gonna dust a nice layer of frit over that and uh, we'll see how that goes. Right. that's uh, decent. I, I mean, it's a little thicker in a couple of areas, but generally you want, I don't know, four or five grains thick and uh, relatively uh, a steady hand. I think I did better here at the bottom than I did on the top or kind of through that middle there. Uh, but you know, I think it's gonna be fine. So uh, maybe we'll learn together whether or not my, uh, my haste here uh, is gonna be okay. Uh, it's hot in Texas, so I'm going to turn off the fans because the last thing I want to do is walk past a fan and have all this blow off. I'm going to take this up to a full fuse. I'll post the firing schedule and let's see what comes of this. Okay, so here are the, a fin well finished pieces, but here's the finished piece. This is the one I've been working on and comes out and is um, uh, very nicely fused. I'm pleased with the contour fuse I got on that. Uh, and then it is kind of fun actually to see the bottom side and see these guys on the bottom. It's a little bit of a kind of a surprise factor, if you will. But um, ultimately, I'm pleased with how this turned out. I think, well, got greasy fingerprints all over it. Um, but you can see uh, the devit is gone and uh, I got a nice fuse on those. I slumped these pieces at 125 degrees an hour up to 1200 and then I held it at 1200 for about 45 minutes and so um, got a nice slow slow fuse since I knew that white and black wouldn't get along too well and these were contour fused on there. I wanted to have a very slow ramp so that I didn't have anything shatter and turned out well. Here's another example. This one's on spring green, bullseye spring green. So you can kind of see what the candy corns look like there. And you can see what they look like on black. Notice that on these, I used the ones with the white bottoms and the yellow top. And on this one, I used the yellow bottom and white top. Thank you very much, everybody.